Simon, tell me, what was the motivation behind this? How does it work? And how long is the interest-free period for? Thank you, Rich. It's good to be back. Um, so basically, a couple of weeks ago, we introduced this, this idea of Hong Kong Cash Drop Campaign, right? Where as a homegrown fintech company, we want to do something to support and to cheer for the economy. So basically, as you mentioned, right, we want to give uh, people the hand, 10,000 Hong Kong dollar handout two to three months ahead of uh, the government proposed timeline. So basically, you just need to apply online. It takes around three minutes, and it will disperse to your bank account once approved within the same day. Uh, people have already gotten it uh, within the first couple of hours, right? So we expect around five to 10,000 people will benefit from this initiative. Um, it is, it is going to be in the form of a five-month uh, interest-free period, meaning if you apply now and if the government uh, disperses between uh, July and August, you have more than ample time to pay us back interest-free. The motivation, right, I think is very interesting. For us, there are two motivations behind this. The first thing is we want to get people, the $10,000 the $10, in the hands of people earlier to stimulate the economy, to kickstart this multiply effect so that we can help the econ economy to, to resume. The second is more just bringing joy to Hong Kong, right? I think 2019 and 20 has been tough, 2020 even tougher. So we just want to give people the money earlier. I think everyone loves uh, early Christmas. Simon, so, mean, you got the advert out of the way. Let's concentrate on the interview now. Let's talk about how the coronavirus and also the street protests have impacted your business, your expansion plans, I I indeed, and how you work too. Yeah, I think I think globally, of course, we've seen this uh, affecting the economy across the board. Um, I think for the coronavirus in particular, right, we see two impact right the primary impact is people cannot go out which impacts both business and leisure the secondary impact is more severe which is the economy right um for example we've seen like top banks uh in in the world uh saying they need to build reserve three to five times higher for we lab our business focusing on hong kong china indonesia hong kong and china interestingly is a little bit ahead of a curve in the coronavirus where we experienced the impact from chinese new year indonesia experiencing now I think, first of all, for on an operational level, right, we care for employee safety. We get everyone working from home immediately. Hong Kong had this interesting episode of working from home, coming back, and then working from home a second time as we hit, got hit to the second wave. Business-wise, right, I think as economic projection continues to uh, look south, uh, we're looking at uh, what we need to do to uh, be more conservative in 2020 and beyond. We have tightened credit. We have a look at how do we uh, save costs and be more efficient ourselves, right? Um, if you look at the China business, we're seeing uptick in delinquency just like the rest of the market. Uh, we're actively monitoring the situation uh, as we speak right now. Uh, but thankfully, what we've seen is April, May, credit performance is slowly improving, showing that there's uh, hope at the light of the tunnel. For Hong Kong, it's a very interesting impact, right? Hong Kong, where we have a much clearer view on the consumer delinquency and the credit infrastructure, right? We're actually seeing people applying for more loans. If I look at March 2019 versus March 2020, we actually see applications and approval volume from online coming up by 36%, which is a very good improvement. Uh, Indonesia, the last to lockdown most recently, uh, we're also seeing uptick in delinquency, and we'll need to closely monitor the situation. Uh, Simon, talk to us about plans for your virtual bank. I mean, what's the timeline? We know you had a soft launch back in late April, and that involved individuals. Yes, uh, we're very excited to have launched already. Uh, in, in a pilot launch, we cover around 2,000 individuals, uh, family and friends. Uh, it's been very smooth so far. I personally opened up my account and got the debit card a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's a very good experience. I think it's, uh, it's really different from opening up accounts, spending on a card, and feeling in control of your financial services. So we're very excited about it, and we hope to be able to uh, complete the pilot launch soon and be able to open for public. Uh, virtual banks all the rage right now, but you didn't apply for a license for a virtual bank in Singapore. One, are there plans going forward? Uh, and uh, where do you take it from here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think our... Primary focus is to get it work in Hong Kong first, build all the system, test everything out, and, and proposition. Um, we, we are, of course, looking at how do we expand uh, in Southeast Asia in the next couple of years. Being able to have a proof, a strong proof case for Hong Kong, right, allow us to scale up very efficiently. And, of course, the technology is universally applicable. So I think that is the primary objective. 
Uh, you you raised funds last year. How are you intending to to use that? Mm -hmm. I think uh, in a couple of areas, right? The first thing is, uh, of course, to support the bank's launch, uh, which we have uh, done the pilot launch this year, and hopefully we'll see the, the full launch in the, in the next couple of months. The second part is uh, we've developed a lot of interesting technology, in particular in the area of privacy computing, which is so important right now, right? And we've been offering that as a B2B. Uh, we, we plan to offer it as a B2B service to all our banks and uh, financial institutions as our business partners. The third is we continue to look at opportunities in Southeast Asia, where we see right now we've started in Indonesia with a joint venture with Astra International, and we'll continue to look at other parts of Southeast Asia, like the Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam. I think these are all areas with a lot of opportunities. Simon, are you profitable? And if so, not that it quite often matters now, what are you about your IPO plans? Mm, yes, uh, we're profitable. Um, I think we're very really fortunate we've been profitable since 2017. Um, what we're looking at right now uh, in terms of IPO plan is, I think it's not at the top of our agenda right now. Um, I think the focus of the company has to be build a virtual bank to make sure everything works and our customers love our proposition and being able to scale regionally. And then we can look at other opportunities at the same time. Um, and I, I think uh, we'll continue to monitor the market situation. Just one uh, last word on uh, the cash drop. You can get uh, your last plug in for that. Now, uh, tell me something. Uh, you got 0%. Is it open to non-customers of uh, your, your bank, etc., and all we lend, as it were? And tell me afterwards, what about retention? How do you retain those people? Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> So I think uh, this, this Hong Kong cash drop campaign is open to any permanent resident in Hong Kong. You don't have to be existing customers. Anyone can apply. Um, I think that's number one. And the objective of this, right, is during these difficult times, we need to look beyond business opportunities and see how we can help and contribute and support the market. Hence, we didn't have a set group of uh, uh, existing customers uh, in mind. But instead, we want to see how, how we can help as many people as possible. Um, so far, the feedback has been great. People love the campaign. Customer experience is great. Um, and I think uh, we, we, we hope to help a lot more and more people in Hong Kong.